Good morning. My name is Ruth Peterson. I am the chaplain at Kuakini Medical Center. For those of you who were here a few months ago when I filled in for Pastor Diane, it is good to see you again. For those who I have not yet met, thank you for welcoming me. Pastor Diane is on the mainland helping her parents in this time of transition. We hold her and her family in our prayers at this time. We are grateful that you are here to take time to give glory to God, whether in person or on, where's the camera, or on a live stream video feed. And so we gather this day in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please stand as you are able and join in our opening hymn number 437. God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit.
pray. O oh God, you declare your almighty power chiefly in showing mercy and pity. Grant us the fullness of your grace that we, running to obtain your promises, may become partakers of your heavenly treasure. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. Second chapter. The word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord in the tenth year of the king Zedadiah of Judith, which was the eighteenth year of Nebuchadnezzar. At that time, the army of the king of Babylon was besieging Jerusalem, and the prophet Jeremiah was confined in the court of the guard that was in the palace of the king of Judah, where the king Zedekiah. Zedekiah of Judith had confined him. Jeremiah said, The word of the Lord came to me. Hanamel, son of your uncle Shalom, is going to come to you and say, By my field that is in Antithoth, for the right of redemption by purchase is yours. Then my cousin Hanamel came to me in the court of the guard in accordance with the word of the Lord, and said to me, Buy my field that is at Antithoth in the land of Benjamin, for the right of possession and redemption is yours. Buy it for yourself. Then I knew that this was the word of the Lord. And I bought the field at Antithoth for my cousin Hanamel, and weighed out the money to him, seventeen shekels of silver. I signed the deed, sealed it, got witnesses, and weighed the money on scales. Then I took the sealed deed of purchase containing the terms and conditions and the open copy, and I gave the deed of purchase to Baruch, son of Neriah and son of Messiah, in the presence of my cousin Hanamel, in the presence of witnesses who signed the deed of purchase, and in the presence of all Judeans who were sitting in the court of the guard. In their presence I charged Baruch, saying, Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Take these deeds, both the sealed deed of purchase and this open deed, and put them in an earthenware jar, in order that they may last for a long time. For thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Houses and fields and vineyards shall again be bought in this land. The word of the Lord. Psalm 91 will be read responsively. I invite you to read the verses in bold. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High abides under the shadow of the Almighty. He shall deliver you from the snare of the hunter and from the deadly pestilence. You shall not be afraid of any terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day. Because he is bound to me in love, therefore will I deliver him. I will protect him, because he knows my name. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. The second reading is from the book of Timothy, the sixth chapter. There is great gain in godliness combined with contentment, for we brought nothing into the world, 
so that we can take nothing out of it. But if we have food and clothing, we will be content with these. But those who want to be rich fall into temptation and are trapped by many senseless and harmful desires that plunge people into ruin and destruction. For the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil, and in their eagerness to be rich, some have wandered away from faith and pierced themselves with many pains. But as for you, man of God, shun all this. Pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, endurance, gentleness. Fight the good fight of the faith. Take hold of eternal life to which you were called and for which you were made, the good confession in the presence of many witnesses, in the presence of God who gives life to all things and of Christ Jesus, who in his testimony before Pontius Pilate made the good confession. I charge you to keep the commandment without spot or blame until the manifestation of our Lord Jesus Christ which he will bring about at the right time. He who is the blessed and only sovereign, the King of kings and Lord of lords, it is he alone who has immortality and dwells in unapproachable light, whom no one has ever seen nor can see. To him be honor and eternal dominion. Amen. As for those who in the present age are rich, Command them not to be haughty or to send their hopes on uncertainty of riches, but rather on God, who richly provides us with everything for our enjoyment. They are to do good, to be rich in good works, generous and ready to share, thus storing up for themselves the treasure of a good foundation for the future so that they may take hold of the life that really is life. The word of the Lord. There was a rich man who was dressed in purple and fine linen and who feasted sumptuously every day. And at his gate lay a poor man named Lazarus, covered with sores, who longed to satisfy his hunger with what fell from the rich man's table. Even the dogs would come and lick his sores. The poor man died and was carried away by the angels to be with Abraham. The rich man also died and was buried. In Hades, where he was being tormented, he looked up and saw Abraham far away with Lazarus by his side. He called out, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am in agony in these flames. But Abraham said, Child, remember that during your lifetime you received your good things, and Lazarus in like manner evil things, but now he is comforted here and you are in agony. Besides all this, between you and us, a great chasm has been fixed, so that those who might want to pass from here to you cannot do so, and no one can cross from there to us. He said, Then, Father, I beg you to send him to my father's house, for I have five brothers, that he may warn them, so that they will not also come into this place of torment. Abraham replied, they have Moses and the prophets, they should listen to them. He said, no, Father Abraham, but if someone goes to them from the dead, they will repent. 
He said to him, If they do not listen to Moses and the prophets, neither will they be convinced, even if someone rises from the dead. This is the gospel of our Lord. be seated. Let us pray. O oh, good and gracious God, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts together lead us on the righteous path to make the choices you would have us make this day and always, as we are reminded of your love for us and all. Amen. Happy New Year, everyone. No, I didn't turn the wrong page on my calendar. Tonight at sunset, it is the New Year starts, the year 5782. That might make you think, oh, she must be talking about the Jewish calendar. I am. I pay attention to those things, especially when a Jewish holiday lines up with a Christian holy day, a Sunday. You know, like those years when Monday, Thursday actually falls on Passover, the Seder. To me, that's exciting, but it doesn't take much to get me excited. Tonight at sundown begins, and I will say this the way I've always said it, not the proper way, Rosh Hashanah, the Jewish festival of the new year. It actually means head of the year. That's the literal translation. From sunset tonight until sunset Tuesday is a time where righteous Jews are called to be in deep contemplation and reflection over the past year, but also challenges that we will put before themselves in the year ahead. Now, Rosh Hashanah appears with Yom Kippur to be what are called the High Holy Days. And it is during these days where Jewish theology says that the fates of the righteous are, fill, are sealed for the coming year and hopefully inscribed in the Book of Life. This is what I got from the internet when I googled it. So this is the time when we each stand before God as the ultimate judge and when we are called to judge our own actions. Another name for Rosh Hashanah is Yom Hadin, the day of judgment, an accounting of the souls. And as I continued reading, I was struck by this line that said, Yom Kippur and Rosh Hashanah are the last chance to repent to change before your judgment is entered into the book and sealed. Your last appeal, your last chance to change the judgment, to demonstrate your repentance and make amends. Wow. The last chance. Isn't it amazing that this falls on the Sunday in which we are called to read this gospel from Luke, where it's all about last chances or what might be last chances? This parable on the surface is hard for me to find any words of grace. It's really harsh sounding. Last chance, repentance, eternal flames, oh my. And the central figures are two, well three if you count Abraham, but let's look at the two. There is the rich man, he's not even given a name, which is telling that Jesus does not give him a name, but does give a name to the poor man, Lazarus. 
But the rich man, I think if, this was, if Jesus was preaching today or 20 years ago, Jesus would have said, you know, he was one of the one percenters, right? He was living high on the hog. It says that he was dressed in purple. Well, that doesn't mean much to us because I like to wear purple even if I'm not a bishop. Uh, but purple was reserved for the richest, wealthiest people. It was the most costly ink that you could have. So if somebody was dressed in purple, that meant they were part of the elites. And then we have poor, literally poor, Lazarus, living a wretched life. The picture that emerges is of him laying at the gate. And in my mind's eye, I see that the rich man, in order to get into his house, literally would have to step over Lazarus. And yet he could only get scraps of the table. The only human being that aimed to pay attention to him from the rich man's household was the dog who came to lick at his wounds. In short, these two men lived extremely different lives, as far apart as you could get here on earth. Had nothing in common until they both died. Because rich or poor, we are all going to die. I have news for you. There's no way to get out of this life except through death. And the, rich, the poor man died first, Lazarus, and he went to the arms of Abraham. He was fed, he was bathed, he was cared for. He received all the comforts that he was denied here on earth. And then we have the rich man who went straight to hell. Yes, I said it. That four-letter word, kids don't say that unless you're in the pulpit. The, poor, the rich man looks up and sees this man, Lazarus, that he had walked over and passed and beside in this earth was getting everything that the rich man longed for. He was in torture. And again, I find it interesting. He doesn't say to Abraham, Abraham, can you send me something? He signals out Lazarus. He still is picking on Lazarus and thinks, well, he's not the best, right? Send him down. Nobody will miss Lazarus. I'm, I'm thirsty. I'm hungry. I'm in pain. And this is where I struggle with the lack of grace because Abraham says, oh, okay, does not say, oh, okay. Abraham says, hey, you reap what you sow. I'm paraphrasing again. Sorry, folks. You had the good when you were on earth. And you dismissed, overlooked, walked past those who did not have what they needed to even survive. It was a form of abuse that you had for those that you did not deem worthy. You had eyes and yet you did not see those who were poor and lame and widowed. Those were grieving and those were sick. You did not see those when you walked this earth. And you've already had the good, and so you have gotten what you deserved. But Lazarus was denied all that, and he is here now receiving his consolation. In this parable, Jesus is making it very clear that there's a point where it is too late to change. Right? Rich man, too late. You are stuck where you are for all eternity. But the rich man says, well, what about my brothers? Send Lazarus to go tell them so they'll get a chance to change their ways. And Abraham says they have everything they need, right? It's in Holy Scripture. In Deuteronomy, 
we read, Hear, O Israel, the Lord is God, the Lord alone. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might. Love the God. Love your neighbor. Jesus links this more than once in his Gospels. We cannot love God if we are not loving humanity. Reverend Peter Gomes wrote a commentary on this parable. He says the story is a cautionary tale telling us that it is not yet too late for us. It may be too late for the five brothers, but it does not have to be for the rest of us. So what is the bottom line? Jesus is challenging us to get our acts together now. We are challenged to listen to the gospel and hear it and then act on it in whatever ways we can. Here it is in clear color, Gomes says. God does not expect you to do the impossible, but God does expect you to do what you can and what you must. Get your act together now. This is not a condemnation of the rich. Don't hear it as that. But it's a condemnation of the rich, which, when we look at the world, is us. Right? Americans. It's a condemnation when we do not do what we are called to do. The book of Ephesians, Paul is trying to convey that urgency to all who would be reading and hearing these words. In chapter 5, he writes, Be careful then how you live, not as unwise people, but as wise, making the most of the time, because the days are evil. Look to your life. Look to the choices you make. How is it that you are living? Now, there's a quote that I misquoted for a long time until I started reading the Bible seriously that comes up right in this morning's readings, right? Maybe you've heard this quote. Maybe you've misused it. The, la, the root, I'm sorry, let's start over. Money is, how does it end? The root of all evil, right? Can you point out where it says that in the Bible in these readings? No, because that's a misquote. Look carefully at what it says. The love of God is a root of all kinds of evil. Wow, that's different, isn't it? Scripture doesn't condemn money. It condemns love of money. And it doesn't say that money is the root of all evil, right? But it's the root of many kinds of evil. Because when you love money more than you love God, your choices will be the choices of the rich man in the parable. However, when you love God, when you love humanity more than you love your bank account, they're the choices become different. That's what these scripture readings today are pointing us towards. Just like the, our Jewish brothers and sisters examined their lives during these high holy days, we're called to do it not just today, but every day. To examine our lives to examine our priorities, to examine what and who and how we love God and the world around us. There is a stark warning. There will be one day where it is too late. 
Praise be to God for those of us sitting here. It is not too late yet. We have come here to examine our hearts and our lives and our minds, pay attention to the words of the confession, pay attention to the words of grace that come when we share the Lord's Supper. Pay attention to the words of love and grace and acceptance that come into your heart as you pray seriously the prayers in this day. And then go out and do likewise. For the world is waiting for people who take seriously the love of God. Amen.
Please stand as you are able and join with me as we confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, worshiped and glorified, he has spoken through the prophets. We acknowledge one holy Catholic and apostolic church We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the Anglican Church of Burundi and in the diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for retired clergy, the Reverend Gregory Johnson and spouse Gwen, the Reverend Francis K. Johnson and spouse Robert, the Reverend Russell Johnson and spouse Margot, the Reverend Marion Keeter and spouse Garrett, the Reverend Canon David Kennedy, the Reverend James Longren, for all people in their daily life and work. Lord, in your mercy, guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. We especially pray for those suffering from the war in the Ukraine and all places where war rages. Lord, in your mercy, give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. We pray for those places affected by hurricanes and typhoons, earthquakes, and all places where people suffer from nature's fury. Lord, in your mercy, bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring to them to the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy. We commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled, and we pray that we may share with all your saints in the eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. 
Receive the prayers of your children, merciful God, and hold us forever in your steadfast love through Jesus Christ, our holy wisdom. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. You may share a COVID safe sign of peace with those beside you. You know who you're allowed to hug and touch, as we say. You may be seated as we have a time for the announcements. Good morning, everyone. Uh, we first want to thank uh, um, Pastor Ruth, the chaplain at Kuakini Hospital, for leading us in worship today while Pastor Diane is away. So let's please thank her. And Pastor Diane will be back in the office on Thursday. Um, we have Christian education happening today. At 845, Constantinos will be continuing his series, Exploring Biblical Architecture, a look at Genesis 1. It will be session two of six in the parish hall. And at nine, we have children's Christian formation in the garden with Ms. Stephanie and Ms. Muffin. And at 1.30, we have confirmation class by Zoom with Pastor Diane. Uh, across the street, Ke'elikolani Middle School, Thursdays, 1.30. Please speak with Muffin if you're interested in assisting this fun and educational engineering adventure with students. Foodland Give Aloha program, the number is 79022. Again, that's 79022. If you have not yet participated, we still have till the end of the month to make that donation through, um, through Foodland. Um, an explanation of how it works is in your bulletin. So that's this Friday it ends. Um, stained glass book, Windows of Light, Windows of Hope uh, by Dr. Epping. Please pick up a copy of this beautiful book from J Joseph. It's available um, right back here. Um, and we have one for every family in the church if you have not yet picked up yours. Uh, let's see, other announcements in the bulletin, Bible study, Wednesdays, 10 a.m. by Zoom, Jazz Vespers, Thursdays, 6 p.m., online or in person, and A Moment with Music, Dr. Epp publishes every weekday by 6 a.m. on Facebook. Okay, birthdays um, for this week, at least the birthdays we have in our church records. On Monday, we have Paula Choi. Tuesday, we have Estelle In. And Thursday, we have Eunice Wong and Diane uh, Chin. Um, or most people call her, is it Didi? Or do we know? Um, are there any further birthdays that we may not know about? No? Okay, if you'd like to join us on the birthday prayer, it's on page 30 in your Books of Common Prayer. It's number 50. And for those of you at home online, it'll be on your screen. Let us pray. O oh God, our times are in your hand. Look with favor, we pray, on your servants, Paula, Estelle, Eunice, and Didi, as they begin another year. Grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen their trust in your goodness all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And we also have a few anniversaries happening. Today is Tom and Sarah Fargo's anniversary, as well as Robert and Laura Jean Thu. Um, are there any other anniversaries out there that we don't know about happening this week? 
Okay, so I'll plug in the name. Actually, I have to do the whole thing, right? It's not in the Book of Common Prayer. Um, if you'll jo join me in, in your thoughts and prayer. Gracious and, living, gracious and ever living God, look mercifully upon Tom and Sarah and Robert and Laura as they celebrate the anniversary of their marriage. Grant them your blessing and assist them with your grace that with true fidelity and steadfast love, they may continue to grow and rejoice in the promises and vows they have made to one another. Give them grace to live together in love, forgiveness, and mutual care. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Is anyone out there traveling this week? Shall we just offer the traveling prayer for Pastor Diane as she makes her way? I see lots of head nodding. Okay, and that's at 831. Those of you who are smart probably left your books of common prayer open. <laughs> okay, it's number, f is it number fifth? Which, which? 53. 53, thank you. Let us pray. O God, our heavenly Father, whose glory fills the whole creation and whose presence we find wherever we go, preserve those who travel in particular, Pastor Diane. Surround her with your loving care, protect her from every danger, and bring her in safety to her journey's end. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. At this time, we normally pass the offering bowls, but during COVID, the offering baskets can be found at the doors. We thank you for your faithful support and participation in the ministry of this church. And uh, we'll send Pastor Diane to go wash her hands as we uh, let's see, as we sing together a hymn, it's hymn number 582, O Holy City, Scene of John. Oh, I'm sorry, 583, <laughs> excuse me. give thanks to the Lord our God. 
it is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. For by the water and the Holy Spirit, you have made us a new people in Jesus Christ, our Lord, to show forth your glory in all the world. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with the angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Gracious God, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and became subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and maker of all. Jesus stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Savior Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, Jesus took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is the blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of death. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, Almighty God, in the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling Christ's death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people, the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in Christ. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully reserve, receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through Jesus Christ, our Savior, by Christ and with Christ and in Christ in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia! Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. The gifts of God for the people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Amen.
please stand as you are able. Receive the blessing. And now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace unto life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Eternal God, you have graciously accepted us as living members of our Savior Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace, and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Savior. Amen. The God of peace, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you, comfort you, and show you the path of life this day and always. Amen. Our closing hymn is number 625, Ye Holy Angels Bright. Serve the Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia.